Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Buenos días a todos. Bienvenidos. It's a beautiful and historic day in the great city of Bronzeville, Texas. Yes, that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> On behalf of the Bronzeville Chamber of Commerce and the city of Bronzeville, we welcome you to the state of the city. Thank you for joining Honorable Mayor Trey Mendez for his final State of the City address. My name is Esme Villarreal, and it's my honor and great pleasure as president and CEO of your local chamber to welcome you as local businesses, community stakeholders, constituents, and regional leaders as Mayor Mendez offers his final State of the City address since elected in 2019. Today, Mayor Mendez will discuss what he, with the unwavering support of the esteemed city commission and management, have accomplished, and speak about the advancements in the areas of strategy, innovation, growth, and the launching of BTX. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start our program, I respectfully ask that you please set your mobile devices to silent mode. Thank you. As always, for those that have partaken in our events, at this moment, I would like to ask you all to please stand for the presentation of colors by the Bronzeville Police Department under guard, under the command of Sergeant David De Leon, accompanied by special performance by Bronzeville Fire Department Lieutenant Desiderio Desi Tristan, followed by the national anthem sung by Madeline Gonzalez, St. Joseph Academy student, and the Pledge of Allegiance by Chief Felix Sauceda, representing the Bronzeville Police Department. And I ask that you do remain standing while Sergeant David De Leon delivers the invocation. Thank you. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof that 
I feel like was still there. Oh, oh, see, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free? Good morning. Please recite after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee. Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Please bow your heads. Dear Holy Father, you told us in the book of Proverbs, commit your actions to the Lord and all will succeed. Most gracious and loving Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for all those that assisted in preparing and making this event, the state of the city, possible. We thank you for our great city. We thank you for the many blessings that you have provided it and us as a Brownsville community, so many that we may not even take account of or at times even notice. We thank you for our leadership, both elected officials and directors, and all our staff that make this a wonderful place to live. But most importantly, we thank you for our wonderful community and the great partnerships that we have. We thank you for all those that are represented here today, schools, organizations, we thank you for the ability to collaborate and succeed as a city. We ask your guidance as we launch forward into the future of Brownsville, the many changes that will come. And lastly, we thank you for this meal we're about to partake and share, that you may bless it so we may always nourish our body, and then we will always turn to you to nourish our soul, and that may those that have always be willing to share, and those that need, may always find a way. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Please help me thank the Bronzeville Police Department Under Guard, the Bronzeville Fire De Department Lieutenant Desiderio Desi Tristan, Madeline Gonzalez for her beautiful voice, Chief Felix Salceda and Sergeant David De Leon for their participation in today's program. <laughs> 
As you may know, the Bronzeville Chamber of Commerce is a member-driven business organization whose principal mission is to advance the business interests of its members through leadership, civic engagement, promotion, and advocacy. I would be remiss if I failed to take the opportunity of this wonderful platform to thank our membership for, excuse me, for their ongoing loyalty and support for the past 86 years. And share the great news, in case you've yet to hear, that we, your chamber, the Bronzeville Chamber of Commerce, are now a four-star accredited chamber in the United States. We're one of 42 in the great state of Texas, one of 193 in the nation, and currently ranked top 3% of the 7,000 chambers in the United States. Thank you. This designation and national recognition belongs to you. Our great city of Bronzeville, our board directors, our team members, and of course to you, our membership. Our membership is and will continue to always be the heartbeat of these organizations. All chambers at a national level go through difficult times and challenge themselves to better serve you. I hope that after today, we continue to always have your support. We're very and extremely fortunate to have such generous members, and we can never thank you enough for all that you do for us. You've shown us throughout the years that we can count on you. It is because of you that we continue to be open for business, and we will continue for hundreds and hundreds of years to come. Your contributions, ladies and gentlemen, are vital to continue our important work and cannot succeed without the generosity of those that supported our event today. At this time, I would like to recognize and thank our event partners. I ask that you please hold your applause until I've recognized each of them. It's a long list and we have to have long lists for this type of events. As always, the great support of our chairman partner, City of Bronzeville. Leading partners for today's event are Bronzeville Community Improvement Corporation, Bronzeville Public Utilities Board, DHR Health Bronzeville, the Greater Bronzeville Incentives Corporation, Sustaining Partners, Bronzeville Navigation District, Port of Bronzeville. And if I may share, I know we have, of course, a commission and Mr. Campirano. I always like to go around the nation and say that Port of Bronzeville is a port that works. And we love to say that, so I wanted to say it out loud again, just so you all know. Of course, the support of Driscoll's Children's Hospital, International Bank of Commerce, Texas Gas Service, the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, and Valley Regional Medical Center. So one, one more, two more, I promise. Supporting partners today are Atlas Hall and Rodriguez, LLP, Bechtel Energy, Burden McCumber and Longoria, Half Associates, Next Decade, Real Grand LNG, Royston Racer Vickery and Williams, LLP, Terracon Consultants and Texas National Bank. And lastly, our contributing partners for today are Southwest Key Programs and Texas Regional Bank. Please help me thank our partners for today's program. As always, I want to take the time to acknowledge the distinguished and, you know, esteemed, fearless elected officials in our community that represent us day in and day out. And they do the right thing for their constituents, and they're always present for us. If I miss anyone, as I always say, I apologize in advance. I hope that one day I'll get that list right. If not, you can text me, as you all know, and I'll fix it right away. But on behalf of, of course, Congressman uh, Vicente Gonzalez, we have Laura Matamoros, District Director, representing Office of United States Senator John Cornyn. We have Ana Garcia and Clarissa Sanchez. Also with us, representing the city of Bronzeville are Commissioner John Cowan, District at Large A, Commissioner Rose Gowen, District at Large B, Commissioner Nurith Galonski, District 1, Commissioner Jessica Tatru, District 2, 
Commissioner Roy De Los Santos, District 3, and Commissioner Pedro Cárdenas, District 4. As well, we always come with the great support from our friends at the Bronzeville Navigation District. With us, we have Commissioner and Chairman Esteban Guerra, Commissioner John Wood, Commissioner Roth Cowan, and Port Director and CEO, Mr. Eduardo Campirano. Representing the Bronzeville Police Department, Chief Felix Salcedo, Commander James Pascal, Commander Kirk Massey, and Commander Robert Martinez. Um, and a great friend of the chamber who is doing marvelous and marvelous job supporting everyone to find a job and employers to find talent. We have our friends representing Workforce Solutions Cameron, Executive Director Pat Hobbs. If I, met, if I failed to mention anyone, I apologize again, but please join our other community leaders in standing up at this time to be re recognized. So elected officials and community leaders, please stand. Thank you, Mayor. Also with us, we have, you know, the best and topped community college and fastest growing in the state of Texas, the great cheerleaders and supporters of our community. Texas Southwell's College Leadership, Dr. Rodriguez, Chairwoman Adela Garza, and I feel that I, I, if I'm missing someone, I'm a little blind, I can't see. But I feel that we may have another board of trustee um, as well with us. If I, if I can have, of course, Dan, please stand. Dr. Rodriguez, I don't see you with the light. Thank you very much. And Chairwoman Adela Garza, I believe she's also with us. Thank you. you know, I, um, I also you know, have the ability to work with a, great, a very great set of leaders that continue to pave the way for our organization. At this time, I ask that all present and past board of directors and past presidents of the Bronzeville Chamber of Commerce to please stand to be acknowledged. Thank you, thank you very much. So, I feel that everyone is enjoying this great fruit that's catered by Lola's Bistro. I hope you guys, you know, enjoy every, every part of it. Not only the main entree, but we have great dessert coming and of course coffee for you all as we start today the presentation of our mayor. As mentioned earlier, I've had the honor of introducing him multiple times in multiple events. And it's always an honor to continue to do so, and I'm excited to do it one last time. For those that may not know, Mayor Mendez is a lawyer, mediator, and restaurateur. I hope I said that right, Mayor. Thank you. Close enough. Close enough, close enough. He was born and raised in Bronzeville, Texas, and is a graduate of the University of Texas School of Law. Mendez sworn in into office in July of 2019. I'm sure he's never gonna forget his term. Prior to becoming mayor, he served nine years as a trustee for Texas Southmost College, the fastest growing community college in the state. In 2020, he was accepted to the Harper Kennedy School Program for senior executives in leadership. The same year, he served as a member of the National Platform Committee for the Biden campaign. Mayor Mendez has received national attention for his work to address and eliminate the digital divide in Bronzeville, Texas, including, including being awarded with a Change Maker Award by New Century Cities in December of 2020. In May of 2021, the Developing Exceptional American Leaders announced the selection of Mendez as an outstanding rising leader. In September of 2021, Mendez was one of 37 worldwide mayors selected to participate in the Bloomberg Harbor City Leadership Initiative. Mendez has been invited as a panelist and participant in the Yale Mayor's College and CEO Summit from 2021 through 2023. Under Mayor Mendez's leadership, Bronzeville, Texas has focused on strategy, innovation, and growth while cultivating new industry, 
Bronzeville is home to the SpaceX Boca Chica and its lounge facility, the headquarters for the Starship program, and the gateway to Mars. And I drafted a little sentence that it took me about three weeks to put together for you, Mayor. <laughs> but um, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor to have the privilege one last time to introduce for his final State of the City address, a man of integrity, a man of true values and transparent work ethics, a man that shows up, stands up, and stands out, and shakes up the world by his leadership presence, our fears unstoppable, visionary, and the number one advocate for the great and beautiful city of Bronzeville. Ladies and gentlemen, I now welcome Honorable Mayor Trey Mendez. Well, thank you. Thank you, Esme. Thank you to the chamber, and, and thank you for everybody to help put this event together. Welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Since we last met, I think we've all learned to live in a new world, a new economy, and definitely a new Brownsville. Over the past four years, we focused on strategy, on innovation, and on growth. And today, I'm here to tell you about all the great things we've done in the last 12 months, and all the great things that are coming to our city. I'd like to recognize all elected officials in the audience, and especially our city commission uh, and administrative team for their commitment to make our community better. It's been an honor working with all of you during my term, and I sincerely appreciate the support in executing the vision for a better Brownsville. So thank you all. In January of this year, after a full nationwide search, the city appointed Helen Ramirez as our city manager. Helen previously served as our deputy city manager and is the first female city manager in the city's 170 year history. A big round of applause for Helen. <laughs> no say the city would be complete without a video from Helen, so let's hear a few words from Helen. Welcome Brownsville and special guests to Mayor Mendez's State of the City. When the mayor came into office in July of 2019, I had the honor of serving the city as the deputy city manager at that time. I remember getting the call from the city manager with the great news. One word came to mind and that was vamonos. We knew it was a time to invigorate and innovate our city and it was time for change. And with this new leadership, we were gonna see that acceleration of change and economic stability. With the vision and leadership of the mayor and city commission, a new strategic visioning plan was created and it was executed in a record four years. Never in my 20 years of service to cities had I seen the transformation of a city of this size in such a short period of time. It is no surprise that Mayor Hernandez was a recipient of the New Century Cities Changemaker Award for his initiatives on broadband. He also challenged our organization to really lead during COVID. It's through his partnerships that our employees have been able to benefit from Bloomberg Harvard courses on leadership. It is for his game-changing initiatives that he was recently recognized by the Texas House and Senate for all of his work to our community. Relentless, smart, perfectionist, a culinary and wine expert, he always strikes you with sarcasm when least expected. He's really made me better at what I do every day and has really taken this organization and city to a different level. Hold on to your seats as we prepare for takeoff and share our journey on the border, by the sea and beyond. Thank you, I thought she was gonna give a welcome. I didn't know she was gonna roast me. Uh, but thank you all, uh, thank you Helen so much. Now, uh, let me tell you about what we've been up to since uh, last year's State of the City. In 2019, I stood on this stage for the first time as your mayor, and I laid out a vision that I believe would change Brownsville's mindset, trajectory, and future forever. 
We weren't trying to be like any other city. Instead, I wanted us to embrace what makes Brownsville the place we've all come to love, whether we've been here our whole lives or whether we got here as fast as we could. Four years later, we've seen a better Brownsville come to fruition, and the secret is out. We've seen the launch of Brownsville's future. When I came on board as mayor, our city lacked several major things. One of the most critical was a strategic plan, and another was a comprehensive digital solution that would improve the permitting process and make it easier and faster to open a business. Within months, we formed the strategic plan and have been working on implementing it. It's been the blueprint to our success. Last year, the city also began implementing its strategic automation plan. Through this plan, the city invested in Accela Solutions, a digital permitting platform which enables online access for citizens and customers. So we're digital. Accela is now live and has been helping speed up the permitting process, resulting in shorter wait times for residential and commercial permits. Through this, we solved a major problem that was holding back our city for decades. And now there's no doubt that Brownsville is open for business. Quality of life is important to any thriving city. When you're trying to attract top talent and commerce, and Brownsville is no exception. Among the top issues facing Brownsville when we arrived was a need for more medical services. Adding more quality healthcare and specialties was not only a priority, but a necessity. That, this is why the recent opening of DHR Brownsville is so important. They'll be adding hundreds of jobs and have invested tens of millions of dollars in our community. They took a vacant three-story building and transformed it into a place where patients can get the health care they need right here in Brownsville. With Valley Baptist and Valley Regional already serving our community, the addition of a third hospital will bring the peace of mind that medical attention is never too far away. Thank you, DHR, for believing in Brownsville, and thank you to Valley Baptist and Valley Regional for your strong presence in our community, especially during some of the most difficult times in our city's history when we battled COVID together. Just about everyone who grew up in Brownsville or the surrounding communities has been to our most amazing destination, the Gladys Porter Zoo. Those who know me have heard me talk about investing in the things that make us unique. And there's no better example than the Gladys Porter Zoo, the top tourist attraction in South Texas. Last year, we formally announced the first master plan in the zoo's 50-year history. Among the highlights for that plan is gonna be an expanded line exhibit, covered viewing areas, and an improved small world exhibit. But first on the list is a zip line. I'm not kidding. There's gonna be a zip line that goes all the way around the zoo. So thank you to Dr. Pat Birchfield and the rest of his team at the zoo for their work and cheers to the next 50 years. The Buena Vida Cultural Park in the Midi Cultural District is advancing quickly. This multi-million dollar investment from the Midi Foundation is a game changer. We've seen the beautiful green space uh, take shape and the amazing La Familia statue that we unveiled this past September. But there's more to come in the coming year. This would not have been possible without the vision and dedication of our good friend and award-winning actor, R.J. Mitty, and his mom, Dana. R.J. took it upon himself to finish what his grandfather, Mr. Roy Mitty, started more than 20 years ago. Thank you to the Mitty Foundation, and especially thank you to the Mitty family for their strong commitment to our city. Now, let's watch a quick video from, oh, quick, I don't know, it's Roy, but uh, let's watch a video from District 3 Commissioner and our MIDI Foundation Board Member, Roy De Los Santos. Good morning, I'm City Commissioner Roy De Los Santos. It's great to be here with you guys for our next State of the City update from our mayor. Uh, the next few minutes, we'll be talking about some of the great things going on in the city of Brownsville. 
So when I first got elected, one of the things that concerned me greatly was that it had been several years since city employees had had a raise. And one of the things that I'm very proud to say we've accomplished in 2022 was the completion of the compensation study and uh, adjustments to pay for city employees who were not covered by bargaining contracts to bring them at least to about the mid-range of what the market is for their positions. Uh, there's still other employees that as we've gone through this process, we've identified who were not part of that study. We'll have to go back and do some additional work in those areas as well. But we know we have an administration and a commission that's committed to showing our employees how valuable they are to us and ensuring that we compensate them fairly for the work that they do for the citizens of Brownsville. So one of our great accomplishments in 2022 was passage of the Fair Practices Ordinance. And I'm very proud to say that this is something that passed unanimously in the city of Brownsville. Why this is important is because despite the fact that we have state and federal laws, which already provide for a lot of these protections, hate still exists in this country. And so it's important that as a city, we say this is not something we tolerate here. The Fair Practices Ordinance provides specifically uh, protections in the areas of employment, public accommodation, and housing. But it covers so many areas from race to religion, uh, ethnicity, gender identity, expression, and sex. So it's, it's a well-rounded piece of legislation, and it's the most comprehensive south of the city of Austin. We're very proud that Brownsville is a leader in South Texas in this area. So one of the other great things that has already happened in 2023 was Chatter Days, the annual return to a full-fledged Chatter Days holiday, including the annual Sombrero Festival. 2023 has turned out to be what looks like our biggest year ever. At least that's true for Sombrero Festival, and I hope the same is true for Chatter Days. And we're very, very proud of that, not only for what it does in the downtown area, but for the economic impact it has citywide. Because we know every year during Chatter Days, our hotels are full. And that means we've got people visiting Brownsville coming in specifically for that holiday and they don't just come to the parades and the festival they also come to our stores our gas stations our restaurants they spend money throughout the community so it has a ripple effect and it generates sales tax revenue for all of brownsville so while I'm commissioner for District 3, my message has been pretty consistent since the day I took office. This is about one city. It's we have to think about the region. We have to think about the city as a whole. We should not be fighting about just our individual districts. And that's why it's important that as a city, and I think that that's what we're doing as a team, the entire commission with the mayor as our leader, is focusing on and prioritizing where are the needs of the city so we can help balance out that growth and ensure that as the needs grow, because as the city grows, so do the needs. Who needs help the most? And that's where we start. And we never leave anybody out. And at the end of the day, we take care of everyone. We take care of the, the top priority needs first. And if we do that, and if we spend our money wisely, then overall everybody wins. And that's why being one city is so important. And I thank the mayor and the rest of my colleagues on the commission for really having driven that these last two years, but especially this last year, we've seen tremendous success in this area. There's a couple of false alarms there where I thought he was done, but it hadn't finished yet. So thank you, Commissioner De Los Santos. I know he's not here today, but thank you so much for, for your leadership uh, on the commission. On July 23rd, 2021, B-Metro added Sunday service, which has been a huge success. In more than a year and a half since its inception, Sunday service has seen a dramatic increase in ridership, and we'll be considering new routes, ensuring that people can get to work, to church, or do their Sunday shopping. And while they, with, while they wait, we've constructed or in, the, or in the process of constructing 30 new bus shelters. The Cannery Public Market is almost here. This multi-million dollar addition to the Midi Cultural District will be a one-of-a-kind building for the entire RGV and will be the new home of the farmer's market and the food bank of the RGV. And you can see some of the construction up there it should be done hopefully in a few months. In October, we cut the ribbons and officially opened the West Rail Trail. This project began more than a decade ago with a group of residents in West Brownsville who wanted to see an abandoned railroad easement turn into a place where families could gather and get together. And this dream has now turned into a reality. The West Rail Trail will connect West Brownsville to the rest of our award-winning trails network and is already a place for families uh, to enjoy quality time together with a nice walk or a bike ride. Phase two of the Southmost uh, Nature Trail also broke ground this past year, providing our residents in District 1 with a beautiful new way to stay healthy and active.
For more about quality of life and wellness initiatives, let's hear from our commissioner at large, Dr. Rose Gowan. Hi, I'm Dr. Rose Gowan, City Commissioner at Large B here in Brownsville, Texas, and it's my pleasure to come and speak about some very important and vital projects. The first project I'd like to speak about is the Brownsville Mobility Project, BTX Mobility Plan. How do we best move people throughout the city from one end to another? Brownsville is not, um, is not a large city. And yet we prioritize things like quality of life and transportation for all. And the sidewalk trail master plan and mobility plan um, are very highly speaking and prioritizing those needs. Perhaps one of the most watched and publicized projects in the last decade has been the West Rail Trail. I was introduced to it in, oh, 12 or 14 years ago when a wheelbarrow of signatures, 5,000 signatures to be exact, were wheeled into this commission chamber and presented to the commissioners at that time, signed wanting their neighborhoods to no longer be divided by the railroad and wanted unification with a green belt throughout their neighborhoods as opposed to a road or tollway. In 2022, we were able to not just continue to plan, but actually build and put the West Rail Trail in the ground. So you can now get on a trail and circle the city very nicely and safely with all sorts of connections along the way. Another one of the projects that fits both quality of life and economic prosperity is the farmer's market. Over a decade old, it thrives and prospers every Saturday. And here in currently, as we sit and speak about these projects, the cannery market is being built. And before the end of the year in 2023, all of the partners that came together to make that a reality will be able to cut the ribbon on the opening of the restored cannery that will be the new home of the farmer's market, bringing to life even more so the Midi Cultural District. A lot of partners, a lot of people, city staff, as well as private sector, have come together to create great change in Brownsville over the last few years. So as we look forward, the future is bright. Many projects such as those that I've described hit on those marks exactly, and many more to come. Thank you, Dr. Gowan. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, Commissioner Gowan's been on the commission, I think, 14? Is it 14 years now? And every one of those 14 years, she's been an advocate for health and wellness and is really the main reason why we have our trails network here in the city. So big round of applause for Commissioner Gowan. She doesn't get enough support or attention, but thank you. <clears throat> this past year, uh, members of our animal shelter team and our health department partnered with others in the community to set a Guinness Book world record for most pet vaccination pledges received in a day, receiving 1,867 pledges over the course of 24 hours on December 9th and 10th of last year. How possum is that? <laughs> and just last month, our shelter expanded its hours to ensure that its residents would be able to adopt a pet and save a life after work and on weekends. This initiative is already seeing major results as our shelter saw a record number of adoptions in March of 2023. Going forward, so many more of our four-legged friends will be finding their forever homes. So thank you to everybody at the shelter. <clears throat> this past August, we signed a sister city agreement with our friends in Ciudad Victoria. And we renewed our existing sister city agreement with Matamoros during our Child Days luncheon this past year ensuring that we continue the relationships with our neighbors in Mexico. Our law enforcement personnel are important to us, and keeping them healthy and well-paid is definitely a priority. I'm happy to report that this past year, we signed new collective bargaining agreements with both our fire department and our police unions, ensuring our safety and their security for the foreseeable future. The Life Threat Engagement Training Facility will be breaking ground in just a few weeks. This nearly $6 million facility is a partnership between our police department 
and the Texas Department of Public Safety. Another milestone occurred in September 2022, when Brownsville became the first city in the Rio Grande Valley to pass a fair practices ordinance, ensuring that no member of this community is discriminated against when seeking housing, employment, or public accommodations. Thank you to the members of our LGBTQ plus task force for your work in bringing about these very positive and very necessary protections for our residents. Several weeks ago, we cut the ribbon on the former Casa de Nylon in downtown Brownsville, which is a new home to the eBridge Center for Business and Commercialization, a partnership between BCIC, UTRGV, and the city of Brownsville. This amazing 36,000 square foot facility will take entrepreneurs on a journey from an idea to a fully operational business by providing them with the necessary resources to help them succeed. With this project complete, there can be no doubt that businesses want to be in Brownsville. And if they start here, they'll grow here and they'll stay here. Just last week, the Southmost Library unveiled a new mural. The artist, Rosa Alejandra Zertuche, was inspired by submittals from high school students through an art contest. The elements that were inspired from the submittals included monarch butterflies, palm trees, hibiscus flowers, cactus flowers, Mariachi's playing guitars, folklorico dancers, turtles, and the dome of the Brownsville Farmer's Market. One thing I didn't mention, there's also tlacuache there. So if you go and look, you look closely, there's a tlacuache and there's also like a ranch style beans in there. So take a look, it's a beautiful mural. It's on the upper wall uh, of the library's main room and it stretches uh, uh, across the four walls. During this past year, the Southmost Branch Library has gone through some major renovations, including new furniture in the children's department, additional computers in the teen area, and interactive equipment in the makerspace. Exterior features also include a new marquee and decorative lighting. For more on the happenings in District 1, let's hear from our commissioner, Nareth Kalansky. Good morning, my name is Nareth Galonsky pisanya and I'm the District 1 City Commissioner. I'm here to talk about District 1 and some of the things that are happening in my area. In the next year or so, you will see a lot of infrastructure improvements to the streets in the area. TxDOT will be doing a raised median project along Boca Chica from the Four Corners to Minnesota Avenue, which is in front of the airport. There will also do a raised median on State Highway 48 from the Four Corners to 511. If you recall, in November of 2021, the city in partnership with the Housing Authority for the City of Brownsville won a $400,000 grant to do a choice neighborhood planning project in, for the International Southmost Neighborhood. In this two-year project, we are supposed to come up with a transformation plan for the area that runs along International Boulevard from Southmost to the Frontage Road, and then from International Boulevard to Gonzales Park. Most importantly, and most commonly, we've heard that people really want safe and beautiful streets that they can navigate. As a result of this input from the community, we presented options to the public about what could happen for example, along International Boulevard, Cleveland Street, and Lincoln Street. If you don't recognize the background, we're actually at the eBridge Center, which recently opened here in District 1. It's on 13th Street and Adams. The eBridge Center for Business and Commercialization is mobilizing the next generation of entrepreneurs and equipping them with the skills and resources they need to create jobs, access capital, and scale commercially. Right here downtown and close to the university. What better location could you want? Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about what's going on in District 1. I would love to talk about all of the different things that are happening. This is just a small glimpse. All I ask is that people be patient. Um, in the next year or two, we will see a lot of growing pains. There will be traffic congestion, delays, and things, but it's just indicative of the bright future to come. Thank you, Commissioner Galonsky. And anybody that knows Commissioner Galonsky knows that she puts in the work and there's, she's been a tireless advocate for District 1 and really has helped transform that community over the past four years and hopefully more to come. Brownsville hosted uh, Careers in Coffee, the largest career expo in South Texas in September. 
This free event in this building featured over 2,000 job opportunities from various organizations in healthcare, engineering, transportation, human resources, government, and skilled trades. This summer and next summer, the City of Brownsville will host the Texas Amateur Athletic Federation's Games of Texas. Pattern after the Olympics, the Games of Texas will feature amateur and recreational athletes who will compete in the largest multi-sport event in the state. The Games are estimated to attract over 8,000 athletes and their families and will bring a huge economic impact to the city. In 2019, the words Brownsville and innovation weren't really used in the same sentence, but things have changed. In October, we held a formal groundbreaking for BTX Fiber. This project will have an impact in Brownsville for decades. Just over three years ago, we were considered one of the least connected communities in the country. And now, with the help of $20 million of federal funds, as well as a private investment of $70 million, Brownsville is on its way to ending the digital divide and will have some of the best connectivity in the entire country. And we just broke ground over the last several uh, weeks. You'll see people laying the ground. There's a bunch of blue cable going throughout the city, so that's the start of this. And this is really an innovative uh, public-private partnership with lit communities, and it's gonna serve as a model for communities just like ours who uh, can't do it on their own, but desperately need a way to stay competitive and stay connected. This will help us with economic development, telehealth, education, and so much more. This past September, the Greater Brownsville Incentives Corporation introduced the Launch BTX Grant, a program with a mission of fostering and supporting public educational institutions in collaboration with startups and businesses in aerospace, and the new space sectors. In September, GBIC awarded $150,000 to UTRGV and the Cosmic Shielding Corporation to support the development and eventual commercialization at UTRGV of cosmic radiation shielding for use on satellites and spacecraft. In February, another grant of $210,000 was awarded to UTRGV and Future SQC. This partnership is expected to create 20 direct jobs and 50 indirect jobs. One of the most exciting things to happen uh, this year is just three weeks away from taking flight. Avello Airlines will be launching direct service to LA and Orlando from our very own Brownsville Airport. The first new airline in Brownsville in recent memory, its beautiful fleet of brand new 737s will link us to our friends on the West Coast and in Florida. Perfect for those family vacations to Disney and beyond. Let's give Avello Airlines a big browser welcome and round of applause. For more on our airport, let's hear from District 2 Commissioner Jessica Tetra. My name is Jessica Tetro and I'm the City Commissioner for the City of Brownsville District 2. It's an honor to be your City Commissioner. This is my 12th year serving and I'm very excited to be here with you today. The Brownsville South Padre International Airport has 60 new tenants in and around the BRO airport. The airport tenants include everyone from Fisher Dynamics to SpaceX to smaller companies, logistical companies, and hangars. There's room for more tenants and the city has large acreage available within the airport protection zone and beyond. Another exciting thing we have going on here at our BRO airport, if you remember, in September of 2021, SpaceX signed a 46,000 square foot lease with our airport, and they're now occupying one of the largest spaces here. The Brownsville warehouses are to be used to support SpaceX's Starship program. Another exciting thing that you might remember happening here in District 2 is we recently had the groundbreaking for Las Alturas Nursing and Transitional Care Home making sure that our community has access to the best of nursing and transitional care is one of my top priorities. This is one of the reasons why we're so excited to have Las Alturas here in Brownsville. The new nursing and transitional center will be located at 180 East Price Road. Las Alturas aims to promote stronger bonds between their families, residents, and staff. This is my last date of the city with the city as your city commissioner. I've been your commissioner for 12 years and it has been the honor of my life. 
Together, we've rebuilt our airport. We've brought in SpaceX. We've completed millions and millions of dollars worth of new streets and drainage over the last 12 years. We've rebuilt parks. We've done so much together and there's so much more to do. It's been an honor to be here working with our amazing city staff and I very much look forward to continuing in the future. Mayor Mendez, it's been an honor to work with you and I'm really excited on all of the wonderful things that we started together. It definitely shows that you put your heart into your work. Thank you, Commissioner. It's been an honor as well. And those that, that know Commissioner Tetro know that there's no more, uh, no more passionate advocate for Brownsville and nobody gets more excited about the great things happening in Brownsville, in space, and at the airport than Commissioner Tetro. So thank you so much for your 12 years. <laughs> this past year has been characterized by unprecedented growth in our city. On the economic development side, we've attracted several new businesses to Brownsville including one of the country's biggest and most successful main event locations, which opened its doors in July. At 51,000 square feet, it's the largest in South Texas, representing a $23 million investment. The former Sears space at Sunrise Mall will also welcome a Perry's Pizzeria, which is currently under construction. Bubba's 33, part of the Texas Roadhouse family, has broken ground outside of Sunrise Mall and figures to be finished by the end of the summer. As North Brownsville continues its upward trajectory, there's more coming. In just a few months, you'll see Brownsville's first Chipotle and Longhorn Steakhouse. And we're working on several more that you're gonna love. I just can't announce them yet, but you're gonna love it. So we got several more coming. Thank you to Chipotle and Roadhouse for their uh, opening in Brownsville as well. And the investments in Brownsville are getting bigger. Just last month, Rich Products, one of our largest employers, and a nationwide producer of food products announced that it would be investing an additional $120 million on an expansion of its current facility in Brownsville. It's always great to support growing businesses and an investment of this size shows their commitment to Brownsville and we're happy to see them continue to grow. Next month, yeah, we can applaud that. <laughs> Next month, we'll see a ribbon cutting for Brownsville's newest bank. After more than a year of working out of a couple thousand square foot space, Texas National Bank is opening a beautiful new branch on Ruben M. Torres. This will be their first branch in Brownsville after starting and growing their business in the Upper Valley. Welcome to Brownsville, Texas National Bank. The city of Brownsville had tremendous growth in investments in 2022, and the numbers don't lie. This substantial increase in development resulted in total permits for residential and commercial construction last year in the amount of 425 million, almost triple the $155 million we saw in 2019 and double the 212 million that we saw in 2021. We also approved 2,337 new residential lots and 101 new commercial lots. So triple since 2019 and double since 2021, there's no doubt we're growing. So thank you everybody who's helped make that happen. Aside from lowering our property tax rates the last three years, the city of Brownsville also grew its sales tax revenue by 13.6% in 2022 and is improving on that again to start 2023. Overall, sales tax revenue is up 44.9% overall since I took office in 2019. For more on other exciting projects, let's hear from Commissioner at Large, John Cowan, Jr. Hi, my name is John Cowan, and I am honored to be your City Commissioner at Large A, and also the Chairman of the Greater Brownsville Incentives Corporation. I'm very happy to be here today to go through a number of great projects happening in our community and some updates on the GBIC side. The communications and marketing and Convention and Visitors Bureau building is being built on Adams Street downtown to house our CMD and CVB departments while also serving as an entertainment venue to host events and also to provide a studio space to provide um, Brownsville TV for programming and for other uh, uses as well. 
I'm very pleased to announce that the El Jardin Hotel is currently under uh, redevelopment. It's scheduled to uh, open its doors in uh, December of 2024, uh, January 2025. The Brownsville Housing Authority was awarded uh, in 2019 a tax credit award uh, from the TDHCA state agency to help renovate our historic building and provide 44 units of affordable housing for families. As chairman of GBIC, I'm pleased to share these following updates. We were able to secure $1.7 million in workforce development uh, for our aerospace and retail food service uh, industries, primarily SpaceX and Rich Products. In terms of our industrial development, uh, we're very pleased to announce our North Brownsville Industrial Park is close to be fully sold. We have uh, about four lots available and they're all under contract. The Madeira development is currently underway in, in North Brownsville. Um, it's composed of 1,330 acres and it eventually will have 2,900 homes and about 230 acres of used development. Once completed, it's gonna be uh, bringing about $1 billion of appraised value to our tax base. In closing, I just wanna thank uh, our city commission and our city staff for all their hard work and dedication. We're fortunate to work together as a team to move our city forward. And um, I'm really bullish on our future and I'm very excited to see what's to come. Thank you, Commissioner Cowan, for your leadership on GBIC, on the commission, and uh, your very business-oriented approach to growth in the city. You've been a big reason, a big part of our growth that we've seen, so it's been an honor to serve with you the last four years. With support of, from a $13 million federal grant, the city will improve the drainage infrastructure in West Brownsville and replace culverts at Resaca de la Guerra, Resaca de Rancho Viejo, and the North Main Drain. There will also be a regional drainage facility and a 10-acre southmost water plain park, which will serve as a detention pond and alleviate flooding in the Four Corners area. The city will also undertake several street repaving projects that are part of the current capital improvement plan paid through federal community development block grant funds and city monies. Some exciting news out of the Port of Brownsville. In 2022, the port set a new record with 13.8 million tons of cargo moving through the port. It's now moving more steel into Mexico than any other domestic competitor. Approximately 4.6 million tons in 2022, with volume expected to increase to 5.5 million tons by this year. Sunoco LP, one of the largest independent fuel distributors in the United States, began operations in the spring of 2022 on its refined products terminal at the Port of Brownsville. This $55 million investment includes 560,000 barrels of storage capacity, facilitating the, facilitating the company's efforts to supply growing retail outlets in the region. Currently, the port is undertaking the Brazos Island Harbor Channel Improvement Project to deepen the 17 mile long Brownsville ship channel from 42 feet to 52 feet. Deepening the channel will provide increased navigational safety improvements for commercial shipping in South Texas and support the expansion of current industries, attract new economic opportunities and drive job creation in the region. Thank you to the Port of Brownsville. A new partnership announced just a few weeks ago between Valley Regional Medical Center and UTRGV School of Medicine will help medical students complete their residency programs here in Brownsville. The partnership aims to keep medical students local and to provide more hands-on medical training to students. The first class to benefit from this partnership will be the 2024 class. A new Center for Human Genetics in Brownsville will provide research and office space for the Department of Human Genetics in the South Texas Diabetes and Obesity Institute here at UTRGV. Construction also continues to expand the interdisciplinary academic building. This new two-story addition will support the Department of Health and Human Performance. Both projects are expected to be completed by the end of the year. The UTRGV School of Social Work has expanded its presence in Brownsville with dedicated office space and classroom space in the Cueto and Lucena buildings with three full-time faculty members now assigned primarily to Brownsville. This is the first of several more academic expansions for UTRGV into downtown Brownsville, with some more exciting announcements coming in the near future. And we cannot forget 
our great community college, Texas Southmost College. Not only the oldest and one of the fastest growing in the state, but now the most affordable in the RGV. Dr. Jesus Roberto Rodriguez, who's here, the president of Texas Southmost College, was kind enough to record a video for us. Let's take a look. Greetings. My name is Jesus Roberto Rodriguez, and I have the honor of serving as the president of Texas Southmost College. We're very pleased to have a very strong and productive relationship with the city of Brownsville, sharing goals in improving our community's quality of life. Workforce development is one of the most robust areas of collaboration we have with the city of Brownsville. In just last year, we awarded more than 1,200 degrees and certificates. These graduates are well prepared with the skills and knowledge they need to connect with high demand, high wage jobs. In addition, Texas Southmost College is the destination place for workforce training. We work hand in hand with the City of Brownsville Economic Development Team in attracting new industry to our area and help existing businesses grow. As a comprehensive community college, TSC provides resources and expertise that help our city to thrive. For example, we actively participated in the citywide work groups to address the broadband infrastructure and stronger communities. As a former trustee and TSC graduate, we are proud to claim Mayor Mendez as part of the Scorpion family. We thank him for his continuous support in keeping Brownsville Scorpion strong. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez, and thank you, Texas Southmost College. Downtown revitalization continues, and the list of businesses and investment is growing. With 24 new projects downtown, that'll bring nearly $20 million worth of investment. Over the past 12 months, we've seen the opening of Boqueron Tapas and Wine, Bujo Bookstore, our first locally owned and operated downtown bookstore, Chirinas Fish Tacos, Market Square Saloon, The Roast House, Curio 409, Morning Glory, Nolita's New York Pizza, and Pluton Brewery, just to name a few. Now we have a, a really cool video of downtown Brownsville that we prepared, and let's play it now. Anyone who has ever heard of the James Beard Foundation definitely likes a good meal and a good cocktail. In early 2020, we had Veda's Barbecue win an American classic James Beard Award. 
And now, downtown's very own cocktail bar, Las Ramblas, is a nationwide finalist for the outstanding bar category. Cheers to Las Ramblas for such a prestigious honor and best of luck to them as they head to Chicago for the award ceremony on June the 5th. Now, after decades of dealing with nickels, dimes, and quarters, as well as a few parking tickets here and there, uh, we finally unveiled our new downtown parking meters. These meters will allow for use of credit cards, coins, and other smart payments, including Google Pay and Apple Pay. For more about the happenings in District 4, let's hear from Commissioner Pedro Cárdenas. Good morning. My name is Pedro Cárdenas. I'm Commissioner for District 4 in Brownsville, Texas. When we talk about District 4, we need to talk about Brownsville's downtown. We see restaurants coming up. We have a bookstore here in Brownsville now. Uh, we have coffee shops. I mean, it just seems to get better day with day. With that being said, we have great events downtown. First Fridays is now driven by the business owners. We give them the ability to decide how it's done, where to put the money into, and how it should continue to grow. First Friday is every first Friday of the month. It's from 7 to 10 p.m. We have events for kids. Market Square is a great place to bring your family to. So if you haven't been here, you should come down, enjoy it, be part of it. Olivetta Park is going through a great facelift. It's starting to become what it should be, a place where families can go in the evenings, enjoy it, actually jump onto our trail, and you can basically get yourself anywhere on the trail because of it. You can see the new lights coming up. People will be able to enjoy these parks during the evening. They'll be able to continue to play sports, get our kids off the streets, and have them doing something that will actually help them. Games of Texas is a great opportunity for Brownsville to showcase what we have. Games of Texas will bring over 7,000 athletes. We'll have over 12 sports here in Brownsville, played out throughout the city, different campuses, different areas. Sam Stadium will all be involved. We need everybody to help. We need volunteers. So please join us in giving everybody a great welcome to Brownsville. We can learn a lot more of Games of Texas on gamesoftexas.com. Thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you for believing in Brownsville. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you. Brownsville is at a great spot right now, but the future is bright for Brownsville. Let's continue to work together and let's continue to go and grow as we want. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And uh, Commissioner Gonzalez has been on the, on the commission for the last two years and is an incredible, incredible advocate for parks, for sports for District 4, and, and we've seen a tremendous change. Always answers the phone, always active, and he's done a great job. So Commissioner Cardenas, thank you so much. <laughs> and last, I can't leave without talking about SpaceX. Uh, their workforce currently stands at about 1,700 employees at Starbase and growing. And they continue to have a several hundred million dollar economic impact in our community and the entire region every year. After almost two years since their last launch, they caught the attention of a world audience with their recent uh, Starship launch attempt from Boca Chica Beach on Monday, which was scrubbed at the last minute. However, they do plan to try again tomorrow. When it, uh, when it actually happens, this launch is an event that will forever change our world, opening up a possibility that we will one day visit other planets from just outside of Brownsville. Or as Elon Musk, Musk says, from thence to Mars, and hence the stars. In closing, the state of the, of the city is the strongest it has ever been. And the momentum is unlike anything I have ever seen. You can feel the positivity and enthusiasm for all the great things happening here. And you can see the hope in the eyes of our residents. This has truly been an unforgettable experience for me. And as I transition out of the mayor's office, I'm excited to see what the future holds and stay involved however I can. Um, hopefully I'll be invited next year, but uh, this, I'm just gonna go off script now, just for me, I, I really wanna thank everybody for being here. This is my last day to the city and it feels like, uh, you know, like a very, very good uh, going away gift from everybody coming here, from Esme the Chamber, from all of our commissioners actually recording a video, even Commissioner Cárdenas, which we couldn't get last year. But um, it was, it's really been an honor. I think the greatest thing, people ask me uh, if I'm excited to leave 
The answer is no, I'm not excited to leave, but I'm excited to, to get back to being a private citizen, watching the growth from afar, watching it from the outside, but still staying involved in my way, the way I was before. Uh, the last four years has been just the, the honor of my life, being able to implement the vision that we had for Brownsville four years ago when I was elected. Commissioner Cowan, Commissioner Galanski uh, were also elected. It was a new vision, a new mindset. I think everybody felt the pace. Uh, I, yes, to the city employees, yes, I challenged you, but I challenged you to be better. And because I knew that you would be better if just a little bit of a push. And that's, you, we've, seen the, we've seen the changes, and it's not just me. It's been, the, it's been the commission, it's been the leadership, it's been everybody in this room who believed in the city, who believed that Brownsville, Texas deserved better, who believed that Brownsville, Texas could be better, and as a result, we've seen that Brownsville, Texas that we've all, we all knew was there. We just needed to unlock it. And I was happy to play my small part in that over the last four years. I did everything I said I was gonna do in these four years. I don't need another four. I'll hand it off to somebody else. Uh, but I'll be watching and um, you know, we'll see what happens uh, in the future of Brownsville. I'm excited. Uh, we've seen so many positive changes. My, my biggest project for me, I feel, was broadband. Uh, whether we realize it yet or not, broadband in Brownsville is gonna be huge. It's gonna change this whole entire city. It's gonna make us more competitive. It's gonna bring the technology and innovation we needed. It's gonna power telehealth, education, and make us more competitive, make our students more competitive. Uh, so I'm really excited about that um, coming online here in the next couple years. And for me, uh, I'm ready to just recharge the batteries, uh, take it slow for a little bit, maybe take a vacation. Uh, my mom's here, my girlfriend Michelle are here. They've both been very supportive. Uh, so I'm excited to spend a little bit of time away from the city hall. Maybe turn off my phone for a couple days, Helen. Uh, once I'm out of here, but uh, excited about all the great things happening. Thank you, DHR. Thank you for everybody that's opening up a business here. Thank you, Texas Southmost College, UTRGV. You all have been tremendous supporters. Thank you to everybody that's here. Uh, I'm just, uh, you know, very humbled and just uh, very honored to, uh, at such a great turnout. And for me, it's not a goodbye. It's just see you later. So thank you all so much. And let's not forget, this is Brownsville, on the border, by the sea, and beyond. Thank you. actually keep the program going after our mayor, but ladies and gentlemen, one last time to our great mayor, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Please be seated. You know, we get emotional as we hear our leader and in his term as mayor, but we all know that Mayor Trey Mendez will always be a true advocate of this city. Mayor, it's been an honor to serve, to get to know you during this four years, and we're growing together. If you, as a participant, did not get goosebumps, I don't know what else will give you that. But, you know, I asked our mayor to stand and to stay with us as I have the pleasure of inviting now to the podium the first female ever to serve as city manager, the great Helen Ramirez. So I asked the mayor what border commission he's going to serve on. He said, déjame en paz. No. <laughs> <laughs> mayor, um, on behalf of our city and our over 1,200 dedicated employees, we want to present you with this small token of appreciation. With profound gratitude, we celebrate your dedicated service and outstanding leadership as mayor for the city of Brownsville, presented this April 19, 2023. This was made by our employee, Rolando 
Olvera on your for you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I don't know, Rolando Vera, wherever you are, thank you. This is awesome. Um, thank you so much. Uh, like I said, it's been an honor. Uh, it's not goodbye, it's see you later. I'm still going to be around. Um, still going to go back to my law practice and, and uh, see, what else, see what other trouble I can get into. But uh, I'll be around, and, and please, uh, you know, don't, don't be, hesitate to say hi when I'm out there. Uh, just don't flip me off when you're next to me at the stoplight, please. <laughs> Mayor, we can also, um, you know, remain on podium. On behalf of the Bronzeville Chamber of Commerce, it's over 500 businesses, our board directors. I now ask our executive committee as they have a special token of our great appreciation and admiration for your term as mayor of this great city. I'll take that from you. Everyone, if you join us for a picture, you want to say thank you. Perfect. Thank you. 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 Congratulations. You know, it's important for me to share with you all that that gavel, which is a crystal gavel, is only given to those that serve on the actual board of directors and become a chairman or chairwoman of the board. Sir, it's an honor to always have you be part of our chamber. Thank you for all your hard work and dedication. And now our chairman will go ahead and give the gavel to our mayor. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you for your service. We appreciate it. Photo ops. Just don't drop in, mayor. Just don't drop in. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you, thank you, Mayor. And as we adjourn the uh, program, I want to take the time to thank all those that have worked day in and day out, sir. Day in and day out to make this event possible. I want to take the time to thank the great City of Bronzeville Communications and Marketing Department under the leadership of Mr. Manuel Chacon. Ad thank you. Adalberto Guzman, Rolando Olvera, Debbie Rodriguez, Alexa Perez, Gloria Gonzalez, Laura Martinez, Cyrus Sims, Mark Espinosa, Mali Montesam, Lisa Saldierna. And that deserves a round of applause. It's a great team. Thank you so much. As well, the great volunteers from the city of Bronzeville that made this event very successful. Dr. Antonio Caldwell and the great Rachel Figueroa. Thank you, Rachel, and thank you, Dr. Caldwell. <laughs> Lastly, our Bienvenidos Committee volunteers, Sonia Moran, Giovanna Rangel, Joyce Vasquez, Jennifer Vasquez, Orlando Gutierrez, Susie Neville, Christy Hansen, George Gracia, and the unstoppable team at the Bronzeville Chamber of Commerce, Daniel Rodriguez, Astrid Rosales, and Hania Rovello. Thank you for your hard work. At this time, Mayor, if you don't have any additional comments. I, I would clap, but I can't. You gave me, <laughs> you gave me some hardware here. But, but yes, thank you to uh, Manny, Alexa, and all the city staff that helped put this together. Rachel, for volunteering to help today. Uh, thank you to the Chamber Board, Esme. Uh, Richard, uh, one of my dear friends. I've known him over 20 years. He's my banker. So he can attest personally to the fact that I never took a penny from the city. In fact, <laughs> I've, I spent a lot of money being mayor. So uh, thank you all so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to our sponsors that continue to support us and make this event possible. This concludes our event for today. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you.